Hi, I'm John Staples, W6BM, and I'm going to tell you about some of the work that we're doing with looking at the earthquakes. And this is done in conjunction with John Stewart, who's standing right over here. Where are you, John? Come on in, come on in, come on into the camera. John is the guy that got me started in this. Yeah, I did. John is the expert. And that's because he lives on top of the Hayward Fault. I don't want to keep track of him over there. So. Now, John does it the expensive way, I do it the cheap way. Right. Well, let's <laughs> okay. See, let's <laughs> that, see your, that works. Let's see your creativity. There. Okay. So all the, this is just a slideshow, but I'm going to show. I, I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of, a little bit of hardware. So anyway, we live in earthquake country, so let's monitor those quakes. So what I've done, is uh, put together some some sensors, and uh, that I've got two different types of sensors. One of them is a sensor that monitors the the uh, the shakes this way. The long, you know, the, the lateral shakes. So I've got a long pendulum here with a weight on the end of it. <clears throat> and then at the bottom of that weight, <clears throat> I've got a pair of optical sensors. One of them senses the, the uh, motion in one direction. One of them senses the motion in the other direction. And then below it, you can see this little thing called a dash pot. It's full of mineral oil and it damps the, the, the oscillation of, these, of this pendulum. Without that thing, if you gave the pendulum a little, sh a little, a little, a little shove, it goes for about an hour until it damps down. Put this guy in, it damps down just within seconds. Okay, so you have to do that so it can really monitor the shakes. So when a when a shake comes in, this guy's going the the floor is going to move, the pendulum is going to stay steady because it's a, it's got an inertia on it. These photosensors on these things will read out back into the computer, and these photosensors. Each one of them has a little LED light in it and a phototransistor, and they're looking at this little rod that extends right from the bottom of this of this pendulum, and it it, it occults the light, and so it, it has a has a range of movement of about a millimeter and a half, and the least count on that is it goes to a, th a thousand a thousand steps, uh, it goes to a thousand digital levels from that about a millimeter and a half. So we're getting down to sensitivity about two or three times the wavelength of of, of uh, red light. So it's pretty sensitive. I also was interested in what happens when things bounce up and down. So I made a completely different type of sensor. I took a couple of magnets here, put them down into another dash pot full of mineral oil that damps it. And this whole thing hangs on a slinky, a little slinky, thanks to John Stewart, who bought a couple of these. Store-bought. Store-bought. In fact, here's the, here's the little box that the slinky comes in. And so this whole thing, with the, with, the, with the weight of the magnets on the end, if you perturbed it, it would sit there and oscillate for about a, for hours. So that's why this thing is also full of mineral oil. So the magnets are just sitting in that mineral oil. And then around the outside of it is a coil. And so the magnets, when they move, they, indu they induce a voltage in this coil. That goes through this preamplifier and then goes into the computer. And here's, here's the, what the, mag the actual magnetic field. Here's the, the, center, the, the center of the magnets. So they're like little, remember lifesavers? They look like little lifesavers with a hole in the center. <clears throat> the magnets are actually the same pole. On each, so the magnets are forcing each other apart. So, so they're, they're bolted on each end and this whole, this whole thing, each one of these little torable magnets is sitting in this mineral oil with the coil wound around it. Here's the circuit. For the pendulums, it's really, really simple. We have a couple of LEDs providing the light. Here's the, here's the pendulum. We have the phototransistors. And then they go right into this digitizer chip. Here's a $2 chip. It digitizes 10 bits, eight different inputs, and, and interfaces directly into the computer. Here's the, uh, here's the coil right here for the magnets. Uh, actually, I have a different amplifier in there right now, and then it goes into the third input. So there's three inputs, two lateral, east, west, north, south, and then vertical going into the, uh, into the computer. Here's the computer. Here it is right here. This is a, this is a, a uh, Raspberry Pi 3, and this is not just some little toy computer. This computer has got, if you load it up, it's got everything that will make a complete computer just like this one. In fact, it actually operates the same software 
is this one right here. It has this thing has web browsers. It has your full office suite, software development, everything like that. That's all right here. This is a four core, little four core ARM processor in this thing. The thing runs on five volts, <clears throat> right here. Here's the here's the electronics that you just saw in the last diagram where all these signals come in. Right in here is that little digitizer chip, and that's that's the entire circuit. <laughs> So the computer is this, this computer is sitting behind this screen uh, downstairs in, in the shop, hidden behind the screen. And you can see two things here up on the screen. This is what I call the daily printout, the daily, the daily uh, 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 screen. For uh, over 24 hours, uh, these, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the data gets, gets um, uh, put up on the screen, one hour per line here for, for 24 hours. And you can see right here, actually something was happening right here. And then there's some control over here for, for, for operating it. The, um, so here's, here's, a, here's a blow up. This is what I call my, my daily screen. In fact, here's, here's where something very interesting came in right here. And then each one of these is an hour, gets uh, written on what I call the hourlies. Every hour, a new file is produced. The file name itself actually contains what's the month, day, hour, minute, and second. It's actually embedded in the file name. <clears throat> Each one of these gets automatically generated. Every hour, it gets stored, and a new one starts. And here, in fact, are the, uh, is what you see on these hourlies. The green is the vertical. The yellow, the uh, the blue, and the red are the east, west, and the north, south. And you can see uh, things look pretty quiet here. When my furnace comes on, they get a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay. When I open the doors to the patio, <laughs> they come up like that. Okay. So this is typically what you see. This is actually very quiet. This is very quiet. You can see that the uh, you can see there's all, always a little fuzz on these, particularly on the pendulum. Outputs and what that is mainly that's waves. It's waves coming in from the ocean, uh, and and uh, it's enough. They 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 produce enough background noise. In fact, this is fairly quiet. When the waves are really coming in, you can really see these things starting to come up. <laughs> oh 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 foot oh foot football footfalls. Oh, can you see footfall? You will see everything here. Uh, so. So that, that, that's half of it. Now here's what John Stewart did <laughs> and uh, introduced me to, uh, the so-called swarm network. This is a crowd-funded thing where people like John contributed to the design and manufacture of these little guys right here. John, you want, what, John why don't you come on in? Okay. Why don't you come on in and just, just explain very quickly what, uh, what, what that is. Okay, uh, these are called raspberry shakes. And they're manufactured by a seismology uh, company who does it professionally. Manufactured down in Panama. And this was a Kickstarter fund. This was the second one that I joined. Uh, this particular raspberry shake has a raspberry pi on the, on the bottom level. And then their aided uh, proprietary uh, board on top that has uh, four channels. Uh, one is a velocity, they call it a geophone, which would sense this. In fact, you can hear it click. And also on this board is a three axis accelerometer. And that's what they're for strong motion. So that'll go up to two G's of measurement. Uh, all four channels digitized 100 times a second, uh, fed up to the swarm servers uh, over the internet and available to anybody who wants to get on the uh, Swarm uh, network and, uh, and see all of these uh, seismograms. By the way, did you see the earthquake this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning? I'm going to show it to you. Oh, good. I've already, I already <laughs> captured it. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, John. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the price for these at store bought, these are running between three to $500. Uh, the Kickstarter program was about half that. Okay, thanks, John. So what this shows you is the location of those swarm 
uh, those swarm sensors around the world. You can see it's very popular in Germany. The server is actually in Germany, but very popular here in Oklahoma, of course, where they're doing all the fracking. And if we zoom on in, uh, John, I think you're right here. Over uh, to the east of you. Okay, I'm right here. And you can see several others here in the, uh, in the Bay Area. So, you've already seen this. This is what the, what the hardware looks like. And so, let's take a look at what, uh, what, what we're actually seeing. Okay? Now, remember, down there between uh, Walnut Creek and San Ramon, they're having this swarm, different swarm. I think they've had, they've, they've, they're up to over 55 earthquakes in that, in that region here. Here's the, here's, here's, here's the latest one, which I've uh, uh, brought up. It's a, it was a, two, a brick, a M, we do, we do not call them M, M2.5 there. And here's, here's, here's what it looked like. It, was, it ha actually happened at, at 56, min 56 minutes and 53 seconds af uh, after the hour. And we're coming on this, on this hourly. This is, the hour, this is minutes 0 through 10, 10 through 20, 50 through 60. Here at, six, at, at 57, wham! We see this nice, this nice little guy right here. That is that earthquake over there. Uh, and, and it's not a very big one, but uh, it's, it's local, so it's, it's, it's relevant. And what I do is I take m the data from, <clears throat> from my sensor, take the data from the swarm sensor, and then also I go off and take a look at uh, John's uh, sensor in Lafayette <clears throat> and print them all up and align the time axes. So you can see here, uh, my homemade sensor and the swarm sensor basically are, give identical looking signals. Over at John's place, they come just a little bit faster because he's actually a little closer. The earthquake, this, this fast pulse of the earthquake, and I'm not going to go into earthquake uh, uh, theory at all right now, earthquake science. <clears throat> that's for another, that's, that's a whole different lecture. This but, man's department. Bob can tell us everything because we have Bob Orheimer standing right here <laughs> uh, taking a look at uh, what we're doing here. So let's take a look at some others. Up in Ferndale, you know, up along the coast, they've, they've, they have quite a bit of them up there. There was a 5.8 up in, Fer in Ferndale last January, and here I'm looking at my hourly, and all of a sudden, wham! Take a look at that. In fact, that's a double quake. You know, you could just, just wham! You know, and so, you, and, and in fact, in fact, if you take a look at the uh, at the east, west, north, south, those are the the uh, blue and the yellow. You can see they got pretty excited here too. And what I, whoops, and what I did is I take, take all that data. Here's, here's the data from my own homemade sensors. This is the vertical sensor, the acceleration sensor. Here are the pendulum sensors. And you see the fast one comes in. Bob can explain this much better than I could. Then these low frequency ground motions. And it's more of a tilt than a motion. More of a tilt, because these pendulums are sensitive to both tilt and, and motion. And then I aligned it with, uh, with, the, with, uh, with a swarm sensor in Berkeley, so these guys are the same. Here's at, here's at Lafayette. <clears throat> Up in Mendocino, which is much closer, take a look at, because they're all time aligned, to see where the Mendocino one starts, quite a bit earlier. And then uh, over Lake Berryessa, here's, here's where that one started. Here's another one, there was a, down south of Salinas, right here. Look at this. I come along and wham! Take a look at that size of that one. <laughs> and then take a look also. The uh, the other sen the pendulum sensors really reacted too. They react a little bit uh, react a little bit later. But when you when you take a look at the hourly, I'll go down or I'll take a look at the daily or the hourly, and I'll see. And when something like that comes along, I said, "Wow, what just happened?" So then I go to the uh, the, uh, the USGS earthquake site and and uh, find out where it was. And, and record it. <clears throat> and so here is, in fact, the, uh, that one that I uh, put up on the spreadsheet. Uh, and, and, and we're not only seeing the, lo the local earthquakes, but we're seeing earthquakes around the world. Here's one up in Montana, good distance away. Big lateral tilt motion, but uh, the green, which is the vertical motion, basically nothing happened at all. That, so, the, so the fast really has damped out by the time this came here, but look at what happened with the, with the tail. And look at the amplitude of that. And that was uh, nearly a thousand miles away. So, 
the last slide. So why are we doing this? Well, the relevance sort of to us is very, very, very low frequency DXing. You know, because some, some of us are doing DXing down in the kilohertz range, you, you know, on radio. <laughs> now, the, these, these quakes, these quakes, for the big ones, there's a, there's a big component that's, that is a 21 second period. In other words, about three cycles per minute. And why are we doing this? We live in earthquake country. We're learning, it teaches computer. And of course, bottom line, it's fun. Thank you, John. Yay. Anybody got any questions? Questions. That's a great topic. <laughs> Bob, how, how did I, how did I do? How did the amateurs do, Bob? Coming from yeah. an expert. Yeah, they did fine. You know, you're, you're Come in here, Bob. Come on. Bob, Bob is a, Bob is our T is a TV personality. Whenever yeah. whenever there was a uh, a quake, they get Bob on the the, yeah. the channels, and Bob would explain the earthquakes yeah. to the to the masses I out did there. That for thirty three years. He sure did, and, and boy, are we glad to have you here. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you. This is, uh...